Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to day 10 of the 31 Days of Horror. DBougie86 here again. Uh, and today, guys, it's going to be a little bit different because most of the films that I've been doing have either been one-time watches or uh, films I haven't seen before. And by one-time watches is I threw it on and, you know, like, haven't wasn't really paying attention when I first watched it, that type of deal. But today is a film that I have seen before, and I actually have a history with this film. And it's from 1998, and it goes by the title of Urban Legend. Everyone's like, what? Urban Legend? What the fuck? Yes, uh, Urban Legend is a film that I grew up watching as a kid, uh, per se. Uh, I remember my sister had the VHS of this back in the day, and watching it, you know, it was the classic cover with the floating heads on it, you know, Rebecca Gayhart looking all like, oh yeah, look at me, <laughs> you know, and, you know, Jared Leto and Alicia Wedd and Joshua Jackson uh, yeah, the cast goes on. Uh, Urban Legend was my introduction to, like, the floating head era of, like, slashers and 90s films in general. Uh, because I was a little bit on the nose of Scream, and Scream was a little bit before my time. I was, like, actually 10 when Scream came out, oddly enough. So I was at the right age, and this is when I started to explore horror a little bit more, was in 98. And, you know, that era of horror, anyways. And Urban Legend was the one that intrigued me the most because of uh, the trailer. I did see the trailer for this when it came out. And, you know, pretty much the main synopsis of the film. It's about a killer going around, killing people in the style of famous urban legends. And uh, Alicia Witt's character is kind of thinks that she is connected to it somehow, in some way. And uh, Jared Leto character is like the head of the newspaper, or like a reporter for the, the school newspaper. And they have like this team up and they're trying to figure out what the killer is doing and why the killer is doing the things that it he or she is doing. Now, my thoughts on the film... Like, with a new perspective of it. I still love it, you know. It's still fun, in my opinion, you know. It's one that, you know, it has a lot of, like... You know, like, a lot of 90s dialogue. Like, uh, unfortunately with me, with Scream in general, Kevin Williamson's dialogue kind of feels very TV-ish. And uh, this one still kind of has it. But uh, it's a little bit more up to date because you know it's kind of more like a mystery film and you know I love like Loretta Devine's character in this film how she watches like Foxy Brown and Coffee you know she's a huge Pam Greer fan and she's badass in this movie she's fucking awesome uh you know the fucking hilarious scenes like uh I didn't notice this before but uh you know the whole opening thing with Total Eclipse of the Heart uh, done it. This film did it first. Not Strangers Pay at Pray at Night. Uh, I actually seen a few films actually use that song. So, and actually, I think they did it a little bit better in some of the movies that I did see than Strangers Pray at Night. Just saying, but uh, this was the first one, and uh, it's hilarious because the girl's just fucking singing out of tune. <laughs> it's fucking terrible the way that she's singing it in the movie. But it leads to, like, this great fucking scene where we get, like, this cameo by Brad Dorf, where he's kind of doing, like, his Billy Bibbit from the One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest again. And it's pretty fucking awesome, and the way that the scene ends is pretty fucking epic. You guys know, if you've seen this movie before, how epic that scene is and how iconic it is for this type of movie. Uh, fucking Robert Englund. Uh... He's, he's another, like, side character role for him. It's kind of cool because he gets to, you know, play something different than Freddy during this time period, too. And, you know, he's pretty cool in it. You know, I like he's a professor. 
and uh, you know, this is how the whole thing of the urban legends comes up and shit. We like the pop rocks text and shit. Uh, you know, it's fun Tara Reed before she became fucking Tara Reed that we know her today. Fuck. Uh, she was cute as a button in this film. Uh, it's a shame that what she's become because she is like on the special features of the Scream Factory. Uh, I kind of think that she was kind of shit faced during her interview. I'm not really too sure. They'll hold me that to that. But, uh, you know, Demons had, you know, Tara Reid was hot back in the day. Uh, you know, there's a lot of fucking, just the fucking special features on this. Daniel Harris as the goth girl. There's a lot of things that I take from this film that I remember. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, the first time I seen this, because I did see Halloween 4 and 5 before this. I'm like, wait a minute, is that fucking Jamie Lloyd from Halloween 4 and 5? I'm like, oh yeah, you know, it's a little fucking funny little shit like that. And, you know, like, I just like the mystery of this one, you know. It still kind of has a cool, like, little mystery. And uh, they kill the Dean way better in this movie than they do in Scream. It's pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, he gets, he's a fucking dickhead in this, the guy who plays the Dean. Uh, I seen him in a few movies like the X Files movie and the Fifth Element he was in. Fucking, uh, fucking Jesus, I'm going on a tangent. But another thing that I forgot about this movie is the soundtrack, the score by uh, Christopher Young. Fucking haunting still, still has a great haunting score to this. I love like the hums and the hymns of it. Really haunting shit. Uh, urban legend for me is my guilty pleasure like 90 slasher I know we all have one and I think a lot of people would be like so you would you rate it higher than you would scream I'm not really too sure on that because I don't know what I would rate scream because I never actually looked at scream like in a very critical way and uh you know this one does have its problems like you know some of like the you know, pacing with some of the characters could have been trimmed down a bit. But, you know, for the most part, it still plays out like I wanted to. And in my head, from the memories of me being a kid watching this at 12 for the first time on VHS. And, uh, yeah, that's all I could really say about it, you know. Uh, if I have to rate this one, it's going to be a solid 8 out of 10 for me. I highly enjoy Urban Legend for what it is. It's definitely of its time, of course. Uh, fucking fun movie, and, uh, yeah, fucking awesome shit right here. I love Urban Legend. 8 out of 10. Alright guys, that's it for day 10. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm gonna throw a few more like these nostalgia reviews in here. Here and there, you know. Uh, hope you enjoyed this one. And I'll be back tomorrow with a, another fresh watch. It was just the way I felt. I wanted to watch something I have seen before. And Urban, I haven't reviewed it yet. So, there you go. So I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Peace out.